Hi everyone, this is Mefs, the designer of Smashcraft, bringing you another episode of Smashcraft Tips and Tricks. In this tutorial, we'll go over the basics of playing the game. Let's start with the four main classes. Smashcraft features four different archetypes you can pick from, and each of the characters has its own unique playstyle, opening up an endless array of team compositions and ways to play the game. Guardians are typically very sturdy characters, with high HP and abilities which let them tank for the team or control the fight. Guardians can do mediocre DPS overall, but their focus is taking hits to build fury and then unleash a very powerful ultimate attack early into the match, all while protecting their teammates. Guardians get a damage bonus against assault characters. The assault class leans more towards damage output and pressuring the other teammates' squishier targets. Assaults are not nearly as sturdy as Guardians, but they can take a few hits. As an assault player, you want to learn ideal angles of attack and always help control the map with constant pressure on the other team. Assaults get a damage bonus against Scions. Scions are the squishiest class. They have the lowest HP, but they have the largest payload in the damage dealing department. Playing a Scion requires good knowledge of zoning, playing evasively, and knowing when to unload the pain. Most Scion abilities require energy and a casting time, but the payoff is heavy AoE damage. Scions get a damage bonus against Guardians. Supports are the final class, focusing on abilities that enhance your teammates' abilities, heal, or weaken the enemy. They do not necessarily focus on DPS, and most of their capabilities will vary wildly between one another. Having a support on your team will make you more defensive at the cost of being less offensive. However, supports do not have any bonuses or penalties against any other class type. The question I get most frequently is which character is the best? In Smashcraft, no character outshines another. This game is heavily dependent on knowing your character's strengths and weaknesses, and having teammates who know how to synergize with your character using their own picks. There are no hard counters when it comes to 3v3. Becoming a strong player is about picking characters which synergize well together and using coordination to win. I recommend that if you're just starting out, Guardian or Assault characters are pretty easy to pick up for first time players. Scions are great, but may be a bit more advanced to grasp things, such as zoning and knowing how to survive as a glass cannon. Supports are not bad either, but your teammates will often rely on you to keep them alive and help play defensively. Of course, what path you choose to main is entirely up to you. It's best to main one or two characters at first and become strong at playing them before moving on to other avenues. Smashcraft plays over the course of up to five rounds in a best of five match. The idea is to KO the other team and win three times to be proclaimed the victor. Each round lasts until one team members are all KO'd. You have five minutes before the match ends and proclaims the team with the highest HP percentage as the winner. During a match, as you deal or take damage, you gain fury points. When your fury hits a thousand, you can use your character's super move to deal devastating damage and turn a fight around quickly. Every hero in Smashcraft follows a similar pattern for their abilities. A is your primary attack, S and D are special abilities, usually that define the playstyle of your character, F is your fury ability and requires a full fury meter to use, and G is your escape mechanic. These abilities free you from most DC effects, with other benefits. Finally, you have R, which is your class specific ability. These are abilities that are shared between characters that have similar playstyles, such as gun users who can reload, or mana fusion for psi users, which regenerates energy. Every character has two reactive abilities, evasion and defend. Evasion instantly blinks you four cells in the targeted direction. You cannot blink through unpathable terrain, however, it is on a short cooldown. You can use evasion offensively to chase a target, or defensively to gain distance from an aggressor. Mainly, evasion will give you the ability to dodge certain attacks, such as Allseer's Frost Lance, Ace's Grenades, and other abilities where you can predict the location of the attack. In high level play, evasion is considered one of the most important abilities to master, since every hero can use it in multiple ways. The second reactive ability, Defend, blocks 75% of damage for up to one second. The duration of the block ability is really short, so you need to time it against large burst attacks when you have no other way to avoid that damage. Anytime you take damage when your block ability is up, you gain increased fury for the damage. Blocking often will increase your survivability a lot at high level play, but spamming it may also open you up to large burst abilities if you put it on cooldown at the wrong time. It is better to keep block on cooldown than not use it at all, however. 
Some attacks have a property called Critical Impact. If you block a Critical Impact ability, the damage shield will blink yellow instead of green, and you will only reduce 33% of the incoming damage instead of the full 75%. Examples of abilities with Critical Impact would be Hawk Snipe abilities. First Aid is another shared ability for all of the heroes. First Aid will slowly recover health over 10 seconds while channeling. This ability is cancelled if you take damage or stop the channel effect. It can be a great way to get back into the fight if you take too much damage. Using first aid requires some precaution. You want to ideally find a spot that is hard to hit, such as hiding behind a pillar or a blocker before you use it, so that you can't be hit and have the heal cancelled as easily. Many abilities in Smashcraft use a system unique to custom maps and how they hit their targets, or aim. In most Dota style games, you can use an ability by clicking on the target automatically landing your abilities with no real thought or skill. In Smashcraft, all abilities require some sort of aim. Some call them skill shot abilities, but you'll find that even your primary attack is not auto-targeted. The hit scan mechanic uses something called trace lines to determine whether you hit your target or not. Most hit scans are fairly straightforward, involving a single line drawn from the character using the ability and a straight line towards the direction they are facing. As you see here, Ace's Gauss Rifle fires a single trace line which hits anything in the way. If I turn him slightly, he is shooting into dead space, however. The hit scan mechanic uses terrain and realistic line of sight to determine a hit or a miss. The system will automatically aim for the best target in the line of fire, regardless of their height difference to you. However, you still require direct line of fire to hit them. As seen here, I can hit my target who is standing at the edge of the cliff, because if I were to draw a line from my character to his, nothing is obstructing the line. However, if he were to step back a bit, he's now out of the direct line of fire from where I'm standing, and I cannot hit him. And if I step back, I have gained vision of him again in 3D line of sight, so my attacks hit him again. You can use terrain to your advantage in this way to avoid and judge hit scan attacks. Now, not all hit scans are single line attacks. Revolver, for instance, has a chain gun which fires three lines in a small arc, meaning he can hit multiple targets, but each line has its own damage component. In this way, by being closer to a target, Revolver hits them with more of the scan lines, dealing two to three times more damage than he would from a distance, due to the spreading effect of the hit scan. Dex's shotgun attack is also interesting, in that it fires up to 12 scan lines in a large spread, so that it functions like shotguns in most FPS games. The closer you are to your target, the more lines will impact them, and the damage done increases. At the same time, he has a large arc of fire that will do less damage from a range. However, Dex's attack is excellent for finding stealthers, as its wide arc can ship them out of stealth, even if it doesn't do a lot of damage. There are many abilities that utilize the hit scan mechanic in Smashcraft. If an ability tooltip describes something that fires in a straight line, it most likely uses a hit scan mechanic. Wave abilities are more common in the Scion classes. Unlike hit scans, wave abilities do not require a direct line of sight to hit targets. Wave abilities work similar to hit scans in that they fire in the target direction and hit anything in that direct line. However, as said, they do not require a line of sight. I can hit my target from under the cliff with a wave attack, but he has to walk to the edge to gain fire and vision and hit me back. Wave attacks will not penetrate pillars or LOS blocking objects. Thanks for watching. I hope these tips shed some light on the intricate game mechanics of Smashcraft, and having a better understanding of how they work improves your game. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks for each hero from myself and other people in the community. Check out our website at www.playsmashcraft.com, and be sure to join our Battle.net channel, Smashcraft, to set up games.